And you know, Father Gabriel Amor, the late exorcist of Rome, was not hesitant to tell people that Satan hates Latin. He has a lot of memories of saints that were formed in Latin that really did damage to his kingdom, including St. Padre Pio, who celebrated the Mass in Latin, Faustina Cavasco participated therein, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and all these great saints, Luisa Picaretta, right? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As many of you know, I've been sharing a lot of videos featuring Father Joseph Iannuzzi before, and I've truly enjoyed listening to his podcasts. And so I do hope that you feel the same way too. And so for this video, we're going to take a short break from talking about exorcisms, demons, and all that, and I'll be sharing instead five things said by Father Iannuzzi that will hopefully help you to grow deeper in our faith. So now buckle up and let's get right on it. Number one, not understanding God. Father Yanuzi shared Padre Pio's reply when someone once told him that he doesn't understand why would God let his wife and daughter die, and it's a common struggle a lot of people have. So God knows when to intervene. He's waiting for that quota of martyrs to be filled. When that martyr is com when that quota is complete, then he will intervene. So yes, we may implore God to intervene while acknowledging not my will, but your will be done. Like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus implored for this chalice to be removed, but he said, yet not my will, but yours be done. It's not easy. It's easy for me to sit here and say this, especially when it's a personal issue. But this is the will of God. He is in charge. And sometimes people look for consolation, like, well, how do we manage in this great confusion when we are confused as well? God's not intervening. Consider Padre Pio's reply. He said to a person in, it wasn't in the confessional, because if it was, it would be violating the confessional, right? So he said to this person in spiritual counseling that didn't understand why God allowed his wife to die, his daughter to die. He was really devastated. He said, you are like a child at the foot of the master listening to him, and he is teaching you. When you look up at the master, you see that he is weaving on a canvas, a beautiful tapestry. But you're looking from beneath the canvas and you see this yarn and strings hanging down. It makes no sense, it's all confusion. And you say to him, what are you doing? You've been spending days sitting there and all I see is strings hanging from the bottom of this canvas. Then he turns it around and he says, ah, I, now I understand. So God is performing, performing a beautiful musical score. He's comprising this beautiful um, story of salvation and he is creating a great masterpiece but we don't see it yet we're seeing just the confusion the birth pangs the suffering until he shows us the full picture then we understand everything but he does not want us to understand everything now this is part of our journey of faith number two wishing hell upon your enemy on one hand, we sometimes find ourselves wishing our enemies or the people we hate to go to hell, to suffer in hell. And so I thought what Father Iannuzzi said here will be helpful to all of us who are thinking this way. We should never will any harm upon anyone, Jesus tells us, to love those whom, who hate you, bless your persecutors, like he did with his executioners, and saying, forgive them for they do not know what they do. The reason is that we do not, I think, reflect sufficiently on hell enough. That this is one of the reasons why we may want to see our enemies just destroyed. Do you know what hell is? Have you been there? Have you read the writings of Faustina on how horrible and despairing and eternal that place is? If you knew and meditated on hell at length, you wouldn't want anyone to go there, not even your worst enemy. Neither, neither does God. Because of its extreme and intense evil and hatred that is without any hope. With that in mind, no one should pray that the chastisement comes and kills our evildoers and sends them to hell. That's not what we want. If we do that, we don't know what hell is like. We're not meditating sufficiently on the reality of hell. You know what really remains when, in the end after we die, we are judged? The only thing that remains is love. This is the only thing we will be judged by. Love those who persecute you, Jesus says. You would rather have them convert, be saved, even if that means a long purgatory, because they will then 
become great saints. Number three, Catholics, Orthodox, and Protestants. We often find ourselves at odds with one another, and it's comforting to hear a priest of the church who is sending out messages like this instead. Remember that the evil one seeks our disunity, so please reflect on what Father Yanuzi is saying here later on. Remember, God does not see us as Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant. Certainly, the doctrine is different among Protestant groups, and even among themselves is different, and Catholics. Orthodox and Catholics are 99% identical in doctrine. 99%. And, the, and God sees us as all members of his one body because all of us are baptized. Baptism is the admission to salvation and to the body of Christ. So even though we don't profess the same creed, God still sees us as his children. It's up to us to draw from these solitary funds that we all offer each other. We can offer the Protestants the sacraments and the, and the hierarchy of the church and the, um, the, the grace, like indulgences, they can contribute through their scriptural study knowledge, you know? The Lutherans did a tremendous job in scriptural studies, in which they're, do and they're, they're we're doing this, actually. They're, they're this, there's this ecumenical movement that's been going on for decades, but we're helping each other this way. And the Orthodox can enrich us with their beautiful iconography and Eastern mysticism of divinization, right? So we can all complement each other in this way. And once we do that, then I think that this divine will will show that it is really the matrix, if you want to use that word. It is the source of all these gifts, whether they be the Pentecostal of revival of these charismatic gifts, whether it be the um, of fruits that come from the writings of certain mystics like Dina Belanger and Maximum Kobe, all these inspirations they've received and these insights, these are all the fruits of the divine will. And the more we join forces and join strength as Christians, the more I think we'll discover this truth. Number four, imploring God to avenge on our behalf. And it's okay to cry out for vengeance while allowing God to avenge, as Father Yanuzi says here in the following clip. But what matters is this, that we don't desire the damnation of anyone. We can go to the book of Revelation, chapter six. And here we have in heaven, People who had died because they were martyred, wearing white robes signifying the palm of martyrdom, purity. And they, how do they pray to God? This is how they pray. When, this is from chapter 6, verses 9 through 11 in the book of Revelation. When he broke up, opened the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered because of the witness they bore to the word of God. They cried out in a loud voice, how long will it be, holy and true master, before you sit in judgment and avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? Each of them was given a white robe and they were told to be patient a little while longer until the number was filled of their fellow servants and brothers who were going to be killed as they had been. So, what does this tell us? God will not intervene until that quota of martyrs is filled. It says it right here in the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 11. They were told, here they are crying out for, the, for vengeance for their blood that has been spilt. So it's okay to cry out for vengeance while allowing God to avenge. Now, we don't avenge. We can implore for God to avenge on our behalf. Nothing wrong with that. I've been doing that for decades for the aborted children. And finally, thanks be to God, many people have been praying for the end of abortion, and it finally happened. This is crying out for vengeance, okay? And finally, number five, the attack against Christianity. I'd like to make this the last one on the list because what Father Dianuzzi said here is on point and short, which serves as a good reminder for us all. And these two periods of outpouring of evil that correspond with the outpouring of God's greatest gift are re related in the book of Revelation in chapters 19, 20. 19 and 20, where it speaks of the false prophet and the beast that are active today. The beast represents all the nations working with Satan and against Christianity. And that we see today through the media, through social communication that's attacking the church. Well then, that's all for the video this time. I do hope that you've learned a lot from the videos we've put together for you so far. And if it isn't too much of a hassle, please do share this video on your social media.
Anyway, thank you so much for being here with us, and for those of you who have been with us, supporting us from the start, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, and may God bless you.